Uh, hi, hello everyone. I'm Bharat Teklopali. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of iNanoBio. Uh, we are a spin out out of ASU. Uh, we are a nanobiotechnology company uh, based in Tempe, Arizona. We have developed, invented, uh, invented advanced nanowire sensor technology capable of detecting biomolecular interactions with extremely high sensitivity and selectivity. We are applying this technology to create two products initially. Uh, the first one being ultra fast $100 genome sequencer. Uh, the second one being kinase inhibitor drug discovery and diagnostics for oncology. Before I introduce you and talk about uh, our technology, the products we are developing, uh, I'd like to give you an overview of the developments, the advancements in this field of personalized healthcare uh, to give a perspective of what's the development out there. So future healthcare, we are at a pivot point in healthcare where we are going to see a major developments and it's just started with cancer therapy as you see genome sequencing based impact. Uh, Dr. Penny talked about it before, uh, early in the morning today. So past uh, approach to medicine, you have symptoms, you see, observe symptoms, you go to the doctor, uh, you get prescriptions, first in line drugs, they don't work. Uh, adverse reaction or development of resistance, you go to the uh, second in line and the cycle repeats till you survive. Uh, going forward, uh, it will be a drastic change where uh, you, it would be based on prediction, for example, uh, genomic biomarkers from genome sequencing of an individual or uh, from regular screening of blood-based biomarkers or serum-based biomarkers. Uh, based on that, you diagnose uh, disease much early before you contract disease, and you could, prog you could uh, do further tests uh, in understanding prog uh, prognosis of the disease and understanding the likely pathways of the disease uh, going forward and thereby subtyping them and thereby uh, prescribing the physician uh, would be able to prescribe specific drugs that would be that would provide the best outcome for that particular patient. So it will be very personalized uh, to the patient, individual level, uh, this thing. And then followed by monitoring, constant monitoring, then you keep listening. So this is a huge change. And this is a plot from, I like this plot a lot, it's from uh, Frost and Sullivan. They have tried to extrapolate, project what this change means for you know, uh, over the next 10, 20 years. And they think that currently it's about 70% therapeutic based uh, last decade, uh, towards the end of last decade. By 2025, they expect that it's going to be diagnostics, uh, prognostic monitoring based uh, uh, healthcare uh, economy rather than what is today. So that's a huge shift. That's hundreds of billions of dollar market opportunity for new technologies. So here is a small, uh, I hope you can see that. On the left, that's the molecular basis of disease. That's what all the new uh, technology is based on. So you need to extract molecular information from complex molecular systems. Unlike PSA tests or mammography, which are very simplistic in their approach, you need to get complex information using hundreds of tens of, uh, no, not even tens, hundreds, thousands of biomarkers for a specific disease. And then you could uh, lower the amount of false positives and false negatives almost to zero, asymptotically. So you need tools for that, and that's where we, uh, we are working on. And then the data from those tools would be analyzed to give uh, recommendations to the physician for diagnostics or prognostics. So here is an introduction of uh, iNanoBio. We invented the nanoscale sensors. Uh, we did, uh, this are proprietary IP. Uh, we uh, did follow on breakthroughs, uh, breakthrough innovations working with the uh, faculty, uh, our collaborators at ASU. Uh, the first one being nanopore transistor using recognition technology for ultra-fast genome sequencing. And the second one being uh, sensor protein microarray for high throughput drug discovery and diagnostics using proteomic approaches. And these two are uh, in license uh, to iNanoBio from ASU, Biodesign Institute. The first market that we are going after is the genome sequencing market, which today is $2.5 billion. But with the fact that insurance companies have just started covering genome sequencing as a test, this is expected to go radically to about uh, $10 billion by 2020. Uh, and maybe much further, uh, it's tough to uh, estimate right now. We expect to have a beta product uh, in the market by about uh, tw uh, 2017 to 2018 and capture significant market share by 2020 uh, using our genome sequencing device. Uh, 
uh, our second product, which is uh, which uh, targets molecular diagnostics market. Uh, first, we are going for uh, drug discovery market because it doesn't involve FDA approvals and etc. But once we uh, produce our system, stabilize it, get it validated by all the pharma companies that are using it, it becomes an instant uh, molecular diagnostic test. We are going for a series of $8 million. This is, a, this is my team, uh, myself, uh, founder and CEO, principal inventor of uh, the technologies, nanosensor technologies. Uh, Mukil and Mohan is the co-founder and CEO. Uh, most of them are here. Jim Walker, uh, uh, CFO, who has had 30 years experience uh, leading 10 different companies to successful exit. Monish Sharaji, who joined us from BMS. Uh, 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 New Jersey. He has led BMS uh, compound management for 25 years and also led their uh, acquisitions, uh, valuation and acquisition uh, side of it. So he's been on the other side of the table, so he's joined us. Carl Yamashiro is the director of product development who has had uh, uh, 30 years of experience at the interface of diagnostics and uh, uh, taking the uh, devices to the market. So ultra-fast genome sequencing. Current market is captured by NGS technologies, which is uh, next generation de sequencing technologies. They're based on massively parallel sequencing. That is, they break down the DNA into small chops, and they, they uh, try to read uh, each of those and align them back. This basically increases the error rates, increases the time to sequence the whole genome, and requires large amount of uh, computing power to do that. That's why the cost is very high. Right now, it's coming about uh, close to $1,000. However, that is if you buy a $5 million to $6 million unit. So the idea is to come up with an uh, advanced technology that's able to further drive down the cost and have genome sequencing as a point of care diagnostics. And the technology that suits it best is nanopore sequencing technology. And it's expected that uh, uh, Nanopore sequencing is going to substitute all the current uh, uh, massively parallel NGS technologies within about five to six years, uh, validated by Roche just uh, shedding off their uh, 454 systems and acquiring Genia Chip, a Nanopore-based company, for $350 million just two weeks back. We aim to develop a low-cost, ultra-compact, $100 genome sequencer, which could sequence the genome within one hour. So why nanopore sequencing? The DNA passes through a nanopore. You don't need to break them off. It's a long read length. Uh, you could read the DNA basis as the DNA passes through the location of the nanopore by uh, introducing a sensor there. And also, it allows for fast uh, trans, uh, reading of DNA because DNA passes at speeds of 10 to the power of 5 to 10 to the power of 6 bases per second. That's huge. And you could, if, you, if you are able to read the DNA at that speed as it passes through the nanopore without having to slow down, you could potentially read the whole uh, genetic code within a few minutes, and this is really possible. So that's what we are uh, trying to do. What we are doing is developing a completely new device uh, using our nanowire sensor technology. Uh, on the left, you can see uh, a typical nanowire sensor uh, uh, based on semiconductor silicon-based uh, uh, FET uh, technology. And this is a very uh, established technology. We have published papers on it. Uh, we have proven that it's extremely sensitive and very selective. Uh, many other groups have published papers on it. Uh, and most important uh, uh, advantage of this technology, it's very, very fast, from 100 megahertz to 1 gigahertz speed. That's the speed of operation of an FET. That's how our computers and mobile chips are able to run that fast. It's the same technology in our Intel chips, et cetera. Uh, think of this. The DNA is passing through the nanopore, and it's too fast for the current technologies. You can't see, you can see a bullet frame, but not a bullet passing through, because our eye frame, uh, frame rate of capture for our eyes is about 16 frames per second. However, if you use a very fast frame rate camera, you could capture it, and that's exactly what we are trying to do. We are trying to develop a sensor that could read without having to slow down the DNA. That's the sensor we are building. We are in the process of building it. So it has a nanopore, and it has a nanowire sensor, nanowires convoluted around the nanopore uh, that you can see. So it gives very high sensitivity, high signal to noise. We are building it. Uh, we have uh, already developed all the key processes for it, and we estimate that it's about uh, six to nine months from now. We are, we are collaborating with Professor Stuart Lindsay's group at Biodesign Institute to incorporate his reader molecules, which could discriminate between bases with our nano, nanopore sensor. We, we have already been approached by, our potential is validated by the fact that we have already been approached by uh, 
three to four large, almost all large genome sequencing companies for potential partnering. We said that once we have the beta pro, uh, prototype, we'll uh, sit down and talk with them because it's a little bit too early for us. So the second product is advanced diagnostics. Uh, invented novel approaches uh, to incorporate nanoware sensors with proteomic approaches, as I'll detail in, my, uh, in a second. As I was saying, rather than going the diagnostics route, which has FDA approvals, et cetera, requirements, we are going to drug discovery route to get the system out there, develop it, uh, uh, get uh, revenues flowing faster, and then use it as a uh, diagnostic. We are focusing on uh, kinase inhibitor drug discovery in oncology. Currently, there are about 26 kinase inhibitors that have been approved by FDA. And the market for these inhibitors worldwide is $30 billion. So a huge market. We have already talked with uh, key players in this, uh, four or five large companies. They're very excited about what we are doing. They want to talk to us uh, once we, uh, once we uh, have the beta ready, and that's in development. Our system is called uh, NMED integrated system, nanosensor multiplexed electronic drug discovery. So you get electric response rather than doing fluorescent-based detection in drug discovery. You could do kinase inhibitor drug, drug discovery that uh, was the topic of previous uh, this thing. So we, in, the, in our in, uh, system, we are combining label-free nanosensor technology with nanovel protein microarray technology. Uh, on the left side, you can see six-inch uh, wafers with different layouts that we have produced uh, uh, at iNanoBio. And on the right side, you could see uh, nanowires, SEM micrograph of nanowire device, sensor devices. This is a nanovel protein uh, array technology. The principal inventor of this is Joshua Labert at uh, Biodesign Institute. Uh, working with, uh, uh, in his group, we have developed what is a nanovel protein micro technology, which could produce uh, in situ fresh functional proteins, 10,000 of them on a single glass slide. So on the left, you see a silicon slide with wells on them. And in each of those slides, we printed a unique DNA and expressed a unique protein and captured the expressed protein inside it and assayed that instantly. So the protein functionality is a challenge with all proteomic technologies. Here we are able to start from in the morning, produce 10,000 different proteins, and of course you, you see the fluorescent detection right now, but you could assay it immediately before the functionality is compromised. What we are, uh, on the right side, you could see a cover page of JPR magazine where we published this, and it's very robust technology is being commercialized right now. Our next step is to combine our nanowire sensor technology with uh, protein mic uh, this nanovel protein microarray technology. This is the initial uh, uh, results for kinase inhibitor disc detection. We introduced, we performed on single sensors at this point. We, we introduced uh, kinase proteins enzymes onto the uh, sensor devices and measured their activity. On the right side, you can see controls versus where we initiate the technology uh, uh, reaction uh, using a specific chemical, uh, this thing. Currently developing uh, the integrated system for hundreds, thousands, and 10,000 uh, different protein sensor integrated approach by integrating the sensors inside each of those nanowells. Uh, we just started on it. Uh, we, as I was saying, uh, three large, uh, uh, we have already spoken to three large pharma companies, uh, and we'd be approaching them again once we have beta ready. Uh, so I'd like to conclude by uh, talking briefly on what all these new technologies, many people have talked about it. We are, we are one of the many from universities, companies across the world, US and across the world. So where is this whole field going? So this is sort of try to extrapolate uh, uh, over the next 10, 20 years. The driver, the principal driver is going to be personal, uh, precision medicine. That is getting the right drug to the right patient for the right type of disease that the patient has, which is a major problem today. And if you could solve that, you are going to, just for the, at the US economy level, you are going to make an impact of 100 to $200 billion. Uh, and if you can do a $100 uh, uh, genome sequencing, a genome sequencer, it becomes a point of care diagnostic. And this is exactly what would allow such an impact to be, to be made. And going forward after that, it would be preemptive diagnostics, not the PSS kind of text, but uh, very largely multiplexed biomarker detection uh, assays for diagnostics, maybe 1,000 different biomarkers for single cancer or single subtype of cancer. We could do that. Uh, it needs systems biology approach. That's where it would be going. It's a little bit premature. The base technologies are currently uh, being developed, but that's where it would be going. 
And then the biomarkers would be based on genomics, transcriptomics, very complex, proteomics, metabolomics, etc. But we could do it. The key is detection of biomarkers using biosensor and, and then using that information to make judicious therapeutic and diagnostic decisions. Thank you very much for, for pro providing this opportunity.